with Wally George. Hang on for the wildest, most controversial talk show on television, featuring enthusiastic participation from our live studio audience and interviews with provocative newsmaker guests. And now, here he is, that hard-hitting, award-winning, conservative voice of television, Wally George! Audience. How are you tonight, gang? And welcome to everybody across America, all you stations on the Wally Network. Now you're watching television the way it should be. Boy, boy. We don't mind telling you the way it really is, right? Okay. Now, I'll tell you, on our program tonight, we really, you won't believe this, I have, I have a college professor of sociology, Robert A. Lee, who is an actual, who is on an, an actual college campus, and one of the things he's trying to promote that he believes in is incest. <laughs> And you wouldn't believe all the other things that he's for. And these kind of, of morons should be teaching school? Get out of here. And then I have back for a second visit, I don't know why, but he's a formal, former hitman, Michael Hardy, who served time in prison. The reason he says he wants to come back is he's, he's leading a new movement. He wants to make sure that no criminal, no matter what his crime may be, including murder, should serve more than five years in jail. He's pretty close to having his way right now. And then, I, and then finally, we have with us uh, Lynn Palmer, a female astrologer. Uh, and she... Hold it. And she, hold it, and she says that we should all live our lives according to what the astrologers tell us. I, I say astrology's a lot of bull-loney, right? All right, now hold it. Now we're going to get to our commentary and then to our questions from our great audience, but right now it's time to introduce our great crew in the booth. Once again, our bombastic director, that's here for Brian Lockwood. There he is. Okay. There he is. And our floor director. Oh, here he is, in a suit, no less. Oh. Here he is, the dashing and debonair Oscar. Our great producer, Mary Pisano. And the one, the only, David Kennedy. Here he is. How you doing, David? Got an enthusiastic bunch of that. I'm glad they're on our side. We got a wild one tonight, David. Yeah, I'll tell you. Yeah. Okay. Audience all right, now let's, now let's keep it all down in the audience, please, because it's time for my opening commentary of the night, and then we'll get to some questions from our studio audience and into these ludicrous guests, okay? But it's commentary time now. It's amazing to me how many liberal maniacs in this country are against religion. Liberals in the news media are especially critical of religion on TV.
One moron in a major newspaper said recently that ministers on television can be harmful to children. Oh, come on. <laughs> Now, now, hold on. Hold, hold on. This, this real sicko said that TV ministers are filling the minds of the young, impressionable children with superstition and twisted logic. Baloney! Now, this, hey, you're out of here in about five seconds, pal, whoever said that. You're out of here. I'm watching you. If you believe that, you're out of here. I mean it. Now this mental midget, this mental midget absolutely believes that religious programs should be shown late at night after children are asleep. Now, now I, I read this kind of garbage all the time, and I am sick to death of it. Children's minds are filled with violence and sex and drugs and pornography all the time when they watch major television shows and movies. Cartoons on Saturday mornings are filled with violence. Television ministers are not filling anyone's minds with superstition or twisted logic. Most TV ministers are giving all of us inspiration and guidance and are trying to bring us back to God and I say we need to come back to God <laughs> now maybe maybe these liberal wackos out there don't want to promote love of God and country in this country maybe maybe they are part of the movement to kill God in America. Well, I'll tell you, it's not going to happen, right? <laughs> now, the majority of TV ministers should be saluted and certainly not degraded as they are sometimes by lunatics. I think people like Robert Schuller and Pat Robertson and Billy Graham are filling a real need in America. They, they are bringing the word of God into millions of American homes. They are helping President Reagan make America even greater than it ever has been. A shining beacon of hope and strength for the whole world. One great nation under God. I'll be right back. George, and this is Hot Seat, and I'm so proud we have the best studio audiences in his, history of television. Right there. Oh. And wherever you're watching this program across this nation, I want you to know that my studio audiences are the best Americans ever. Right there. Okay, David, did you have some have some comment on my opening yeah, remarks. Quite the opposite of TV evangelism, being harmful to children. One of the best things that could happen to every kid in America is that he go to church, TV or otherwise. How about that? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> All right. Hey, now we're going to ask, ask some questions from our great studio audience. And by the way, we have about uh, 25,000 tonight. <laughs> Give or take a couple hundred. Give or take a few thousand, yeah. okay. <laughs> but now it's time for the mailbag! <laughs> Here's one I'm not too sure that I'm too fond of. It, I'm not, it's a little bit both ways. Okay, let's hear it's it. From, you know, this, it's from Annabelle Hoffman. Okay, so far. Okay, so far. Yes. Annabelle says, Dear Wally, I don't understand why so many of your guests pick on you about your hair. <laughs> Come on. Wally, I would have no idea why they would say that. And she says to me, uh, Annabelle says, it's obvious to me 
that you comb your hair quite nicely over a slight bald spot. <laughs> a slight bald spot? <laughs> Get out of here! Slight bald spot. No bald spot? Hey, you got a slight bald spot, Annabelle, in the back of your brain, I think. It's ridiculous. <laughs> I tell you, scary Annabelle. Now, here's a, here's a real winner here. His name is Wayne Miller. Uh, and he's, listen to this, he's a real genius. He says, your show is strange and a little funny. He, he spells little, L-I-T-T-E-L. <laughs> He says, okay. he says, you say you can say anything you want to say. He spells want, W-H-A-N-T. <laughs> he says, well, listen, Mr. Big Shot, I say you don't have the right to say anything you want to say. <laughs> hey, hey, pal, when you learn how to spell, I'll respond to you, you idiot. Whether you like it or not, I'll say what I want to say. <laughs> and finally, here, this isn't bad. This, this comes from Randall Stern in Wilmot, Illinois. Good old Wilmot. Dear Wally, I think liberal commie punks in this country should be strapped to a chair and forced to watch your show. <laughs> He says that will certainly enlighten them and straighten them out, right? Yeah. And finally, and finally, I got this in the mail from a guy named, uh, 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 he calls himself Broder the Kazoo Maker. <laughs> and he said, I sent you this, Wally, so you can play it on your show, and it'll, you can play patriotic music on your show, and it'll really enhance the program. Shall I try it? Yeah! What do you think, David? See if it blows bubbles. Let's see here. Hey, that's... Get out of here! Hey, that was good. Get out of here! <laughs> okay, come on. Yeah, that was going to be terrific. That's terrible. <laughs> hey, I sound like Rudy Krause with yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. Yes, go ahead. How you doing, Wally? It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. In the beautiful city of Anaheim. My name is Dean Shanktel. I'm music director of KDSK Radio. Great. And we watch your show all the time. I'm representing KDSK here. There's a couple of Good. things I'd like to talk to you about. Good to have you. J just one, pal, because we have a, a long okay, list. Okay, yeah. Okay. I'd like to invite you down on the show because I'd like you to sit down and talk about patriotism to our, right. our listeners out there in the valley. Also, one quick thing here. I want to talk to you about the Parents Music Resource Center. What are your views on what they're doing in Washington now? Well, I say this. It is high time that the music industry becomes responsible. And when music on records and or videos advocate and promote Satan worship and drugs and violence and perverted sex, I say that parents should know what their little kids are listening to, right? Thank you, Wally. It's about time, it's about time the music industry learned to clean up its act. Am I right? Okay. There he is. How are you? Fine, Wally. I'm, I'm Dan Wooding from Garden Grove. Originally. I know, Dan. How are you doing? Fine. Uh, you remember a couple of years ago, I did a story about your father being from Liverpool. That's right. You did a was, story on me in England. In England. He was published in the Liverpool Daily Echo. And uh, you were always wanted to know what a scouser was because we headlined the story, Wally George, the TV scouser. What? So, so I've, I've just been to Liverpool and I brought this back to you and it tells you... Wow. <laughs> it tells you... If you read, if you read yes, that, Molly, you, yes. you, if you read that, you will find out exactly what Scouse is. Okay, thank you very much. Thank That's it for Dan Wedding. Very good. Okay, yes, yes, come on up. You're now a Scouser. Okay, yes. Hi, Wally. 
Yes, sir. I'm Rob Volmer from the beautiful studio of Garden Grove. Yes, sir. Uh, I was wondering if you could tell me how you expect President Reagan and Paul Volcker to finance the deficit without creating hyperinflation. Well, listen, as far as the deficit is, is concerned, when President Reagan was serving his first term of office, he set up several good budgets to Congress, and if they had adopted them, we would not have anywhere near the deficit we have now. People don't remember that when Ronald Reagan was the governor of, of the state of California, he inherited a massive deficit from the Democrats. And when he left office, eight years later, we had a healthy surplus. If the people in Washington would listen to Ronald Reagan as they did here in California, we could chip away that deficit. Am I right? <laughs> Hi, Wally. I'm Jim McFall from Torrance. Yes, Jim. I just want to ask you, what do you think of uh, Jesse Jackson's recent actions at the summit meeting? Well, at that recent summit meeting with uh, 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 President Reagan and Gorb Gorbachev, I think Jesse Jackson, I don't know why he keeps poking his nose into foreign affairs. I hope that he realizes, or you should realize, that he could have gone over there and ruined and undermined the president at that summit meeting. And I say, Jesse Jackson better realize that he is not the president of the United States. And he, yeah. and, yeah, Wally. And he, ha he has no right to go running around the world practicing foreign affairs. That should be left to Ronald Reagan. Great audience. And now it's time, David, for our first victim on the hot seat. So if you will. Okay. First up tonight, Wally, is Robert A. Lee, who is a professor of sociology at El Camino College. <laughs> Give you a hand to start with. Now wait a minute. First of all, Robert A. Lee, are you really a professor of sociology at a college here in Southern California? I'm a full professor, have been for 12 years. So why, why do you come dressed like that to a, a national television program? Like what? Like what? I mean, wearing a, a dirty t-shirt and Levi's? What do you think of that, huh? This, this is a clean t-shirt, not dirty hey, one. What is that supposed to mean on your t-shirt? What is, that, what is that supposed to mean? Can you tell me? Ask them. I think that is a degrading thing to put on your teacher. What do you think? Do you dress like this when you teach at college? <coughs> Not anymore. Hey, but Robert, it doesn't surprise me that, that you'd wear something degrading like that because you are a degrading person. Do you know that? I know. I know. You're right. You're now, right. You, you have written... Hey, don't smile, Robert. It's not funny. It is funny. Now, now you have... I'll get my chance. You, you have written... If you're lucky, you will. <laughs> now, you, you, have written, you have written several disgusting papers on college. One... Was a, was a paper on incest, and you say that you approve of incest, and you say incest brings the family closer together. Do you honestly, do you honestly How much vote? do you pay them? Come on, they know, I don't, they know a, they know a freako when they see one, right? Yeah! Robert, how can you possibly, how can you possibly as a college professor condone <coughs> incest? How can you, that, that is the worst thing I can think of. What college did you of. go to, Wally? What, pardon? What college did you go to? What college did yeah. I go to? What high school did you go to then? I went to Hollywood Professional School. Yeah. <laughs> I'm asking you a question. Why, how can you possibly come out and be in favor of incest, one of the most degrading things that, that can happen? What makes it degrading? What makes it degrading? Your, your 
a college professor and I have to tell him what makes it degrading? Yes. It's illegal to say. You know, way. first of all, it is illegal. It is terribly raunchy to even think of having oh, sexual geez. relations with a member of your own family. Do you think it's all right for uh, a mother or a father to have sex with their own children? No, no. I, well, I think, I think, <clears throat> I think sibling incest is okay, though. Wait a minute, what is sibling incest? Well, Let, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me explain, let me explain. <clears throat> First of all, sex is good, whether you call it homosexuality, bellatio. Oh, come on now, come on now. I, sex is good, whether it's homosexuality, heterosexuality, S&M, cunnilingus, bellatio. That's all good it's, for you. Is it, is it good? Isn't sex good? <laughs> not, not, not the... What? What's wrong? What's, what kind is it good? Hold on, Robert. Hold on, Robert. Not the kind. For you to say as a college professor... That's why I say it, because I am a college professor. I know better. Well, hey, listen. I have a letter from one of your students... You didn't tell me that before. ...right here, who's, who said that she heard that you were going to be on this program, and she thinks you are a... De I'll show you the letter you can read after the show. A lot of people at the El Camino think that way, just, just for the... Just She's for the a record. student of yours, and she says you, you are... You tell me her name? You are a... No, I, I'm not going to embarrass her, but I'll show you the letter you after the program. You wrote it yourself, didn't you, before No, the... I did not. <laughs> she says that you use four-letter words all the time in front of your students. Is that correct? There are a lot of four-letter words in the dictionary. <laughs> Talking about filthy, degrading four-letter words. What's filthy? What's filthy? Yeah. Hey, hey, hold on. Do you want a real picture of what is filthy and degrading? Look in the mirror when you get home tonight. <laughs> now, you also, you also have had in another, in another one of his great intellectual papers. You, you came out and said that Satan is Jesus's mother. Now, how do you explain a ridiculous, horrible statement like that? Very easily, very easily. The Bible is filled with anomalies. Now, anomalies mean we don't know exactly what it means. And you are full of you know what. Yeah, I'm still, I'm still. <laughs> I wrote that paper because I said we can come up with an alternative by saying instead of the fact that, you know, God had Jesus as a son, but there was no mother mentioned, that uh, two people ate a piece of fruit and all of a sudden the rest of us are paying for it now, right? I mean, that's, that's ridiculous. That's nonsense. Why do we talk teaching nonsense is what I'm asking. Well, what kind of nonsense is it when you say Satan, you know, is, Satan is, is the mother of Jesus? I could just give you an illustration of how you can re -re rewrite the whole Bible, come with a perfectly consistent, internally consistent theory, and uh, explain facts differently. And, and you, don't have, you don't have anomalies. Why, how, how can you explain the fact that Adam and Eve ate a fruit, and I'm paying for it now, a billion years later? I didn't do anything, did you? I say... You have now. What you are saying in, in front of... I'm college, here to make people think. That's what I'm here for. You make people sick to their stomach. That's what you're here for. Now, well, if, if, wait, wait, listen if, to what else. If, oh, 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 if, if, if making people think makes them sick to their stomach, then they need me even more. No, hey, hey. <coughs> All right. Hey, do you want some more? I'll give you... Let me give you some more of his gutter philosophy here. <laughs> I'll send you copies if he you says, want to some. He me says El Camino that, Hold on, Robert, I'm talking here. This, Sorry. this is my show, not your sick classroom. <laughs> well, hold on. <coughs> now, you say, Robert Lee, that in the United States, we have political prisoners. Isn't that correct? Yes, yes. And listen to who he says we should release. He calls them political prisoners, he says we should release Charles Manson. He also, he, he also says we should release <coughs> Sirhan Sirhan, who killed Robert F. Kennedy. Well, got supporters out there. He, he, he also says, he also says that we should release the onion field killers. And 
What a shameful thing. He says we should release James Earl Ray, who murdered Martin Luther King. Oh. Now, how? How can you possibly defend that kind of ludicrous statement? Well, let me just say it this way. The problem with people that are right-wingers, and it comes down to the religion and everything else, is that you just can't stand to feel good. That's what it is. You go to church, you wring your hands. Wait, you haven't answered your question. I'll, 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 I'll answer the uh, previous question. I'll come back to that no, one. No, right? no, you've got this question right here. <clears throat> How can you say you that, 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 that we should release monsters like Charles Manson, Sirhan Sirhan, and those people? How, why do you think we should release them? Because, you know, they, they spent 15 years in jail. They're different people now. Well, it's a different world. Uh, I have news for you. Those kind of monsters Shooter, you agree with this guy? be alive today. <laughs> I have a lot more to ask you. I'll be right back. Stay where you are. <laughs> Ray Lee, a disgusting man in my opinion. What about you, Ray? Huh? He's a professor a professor, of, professor. Of, of sociology at a local college here, and no wonder some of our students are complaining about their professors, right? Yeah. Now, you also, Robert, you also approve of the legalization of all street drugs. What do you think about that? Yeah. Why is that, Robert? Let me just start off by saying this one thing. People use drugs for one reason because it makes them feel good. Don't forget that. What's wrong with feeling good? That's what it comes down to. Hey, hold on, pal. What's wrong with getting high on life? Answer my right? question. <laughs> I have news for you, pal. I don't think you could take anything to make you, you feel good. You're so rotten down deep inside. What do you think? <laughs> well, no, no, answer this question then. Answer this question. I once asked a heroin addict. What is the feeling of being on heroin? He said it's like having a hundred orgasms at the same time. Oh, oh something like that. Let's deal with facts. Let's not deal with, with, uh, with you know, Did you ask him how he feels when he comes down? Okay, that's the reason we should legalize it. He shouldn't have to come down. Yeah. Oh. So, so your philosophy is that people sh sh should stay high on drugs all the time. Let me tell you, let me tell you why. In the final analysis, people that are on the right, it comes down to this. Right-wingers like Wally feel it's uh, illegitimate to be Wally both, who? Wally George. Thank you very much. It's illegitimate to be both unproductive and happy at the same time. That's what you're on drugs. You're happy, and you don't have to work. If you got to work and go home, you're unhappy, and see somebody that's happy, then you're upset. That's what's wrong with you. Oh, you are, you are ridiculous. <laughs> now, hold on. Let me ask you this. I understand, Robert, that you are, brag in your classroom that you take drugs. Is that right? <coughs> you want me to answer this? Yes. I, uh, <clears throat> I do take drugs on occasion. Not now, however. But, okay, uh, but, I, but you... I do take drugs because drugs make you feel good. What Why should I watch Dynasty in Dallas? Hold I don't on. want to. Hold on, Robert. What kind... Get high Robert, on life. What's hold that on. Mean? Hold on, Robert. Just a minute. What does it mean to get high on life? What kind of drugs have you taken? Well, I take, uh, <clears throat> uppers mostly. Cocaine, uh... Oh! <laughs> This hey, is a me, college professor tell saying this. all this. Tell me this. Come on up, come on up. Let's, let's get some questions from the audience. Go ahead, yes. Yes, uh, do you believe in God? No. You do Why not? Why was I... Uh, I, I think well, I have news. I don't think God believes in you either. <laughs> let, me, let, me ask you, let me ask you a question. Or let me say this. Belief means nothing more than you believe. It doesn't mean I should or should not. It doesn't mean what you believe is right or wrong. It just means that you do. You have a perfect right to believe whatever you want to. So do I. I think you're a very but don't sick confuse, person. Don't confuse. Yeah. Yeah. I think he should be locked up, Wally, forever. Okay. I said, I think he should be locked up forever. Okay, right on. <laughs> yes, go ahead, young lady. I'm Carrie. You said Charles Manson should be left, let out? Sure. What if he killed your daughter? We get to those either or situations. Charlie Manson, what do you want? What do you want done with you? you? Want him in a gunny sack twenty years from now? You want to watch him for the next twenty years? Hold on. Answer her question. For, answer her question. Yeah, I if think, he murdered your daughter, what would you want done to him? If he murdered my daughter, I couldn't bring my daughter back. I wouldn't care what happened to her. See, I wouldn't bother. Oh. I, what, what do you want me to do? I'm a new 
honest. I'll tell you what should be done to that monster and monsters like him. They should be put to death. Which is... Would you want to pull the switch yourself, Wally? I, hey, I would volunteer right now. Hey, if they put Charles Manson in the in the gas chamber and they put Sirhan Sirhan in there, I'd be the first to volunteer. To volunteer. My name is Veta Gale, and I would just like to um, say that after listening to you speak, Mr. Lee, I just. I have never heard such disgusting and low things in my whole life. I believe, I believe that somewhere along the line while you were growing up, you must have had a traumatic experience, a perverted type of experience to make you... Are you qualified as a psychologist now? I'm qualified to know what a decent human being is, and you are lower oh, you know, than you know decent to believe oh, okay. that... It sex does... between brothers and sisters, it, that's a sin. It's called fun, too. It's a sin. Oh, it's called fun. It's a sin. You guys should come to the beach where we're a little more liberal. Hey. Yes, yes. Yes, I, on the other hand, would like to take your class and uh, want to invite you to a party. All right. All right. See, see, you let one in. Hey, I'll see tell you what, pal. You look like two of a kind. I have news for you. Yes, go ahead. A lot of sick people here tonight. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Yes. I want to know what you think of artificial insemination of animals. <laughs> Ask her if she wants it first. Oh, that's it. Don't they have rights too? That's one of the students right there, Molly. Hey, yeah. is that sickness or not? Let me tell you something. It is a disgrace to think that some animal like that can be teaching students in a college in Southern California. And I say people like this scum should not be allowed to practice the profession of teaching. I'll be right back. 228-5333, toll free. 1-800-228-5333. Weeknights on Billy... Thank you very much. Welcome back, everybody, across America. This is America's first action talk show. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you, I'm sure glad to get, get rid of that last punk, but I wanted to, to show you what some college professors are like, and they shouldn't be on any school campus, right? That guy... That guy had the sickest ideas I think I have ever heard. In my whole anything, life. Anything. I mean, we've had some real scummy people, but this is probably the lowest of the low we've had on our show. Okay. All right, now we want to remind you, uh, we love to hear from you all across the country, wherever you are. Write to me and tell me what station you're watching us on across America. Love to get your letters. I read every letter. I promise you I do. And we answer every one. I really do. You know that, David. You bet. Read every single letter. We answer every one. And... If you want information about the official Wally George fan club, let us know, and we'll send you all the information. Write to me, though. Love to get your comments. Some of the letters I read right here on the air on the mailbag segment, as you know also. My address, very simple. Just write to Wally George, hot seat, P.O. Box 56 TV, Anaheim, California, 92803. That's Wally George, hot seat, P.O. Box 56 TV. Anaheim, California, 92803. Please tell us what city you're watching us in, what station you're watching us on around America. Okay? Now, if you want to come down to one of our tapings, if you're already here in Southern California, or perhaps you're going to be visiting out here, it's easy to get tickets. We'll get you on our list. 
And all you have to do is during working hours, Monday through Friday, 8.30 to 6, call the numbers on your screen, leave us your name and your telephone number, how many tickets you want, and we'll get back to you. But be sure to call during business hours, Monday through Friday. The numbers are in the 818 or the 213 area code, 464-6111, 464-6111. And then, of course, are you ready? In the 714 area code, it's 999. Great tonight. Fantastic. Those are magic numbers. Speaking yeah. of magic numbers, it's time for our next hot seat guest or victim, whatever you want to call it. And David, would you introduce her, if you will? Okay, the next on the hot seat tonight, and she's got to be a vast improvement over the last clown we had here, is a professional astrologer, uh, Lynn Palmer. Here she is. <laughs> Give me a hand to start with. Not too many followers out there, Lynn. That's all right. Now, you are a professional. What do you, what do you call yourself? An astrologer or astrologist? Astrologer. Or astrologer. What? astrologer. Astrologer, yes. Mm -hmm. How long have you been practicing astrology? 28 and a half years. Oh. Whoa. Woo. Well, then, let me tell you, I hate to say this, but you've been, uh, for 28 years, you, you, you've been into a lot of bull -loney. Oh. You have a right to your opinion, but I've helped an awful lot of people. Yeah, right. You know. And that's what's important when you can guide other people and help them. If you can help other people and you have letters, you get letters. I get letters, too, telling me how much I've helped people. I do positive thinking astrology. I don't do negative but stuff. But, Lynn, how can any... I think it's wrong for people... Well, you're entitled to your opinion. Now, hold but on. But I'm entitled to mine, too. Let me, let me ask okay. you. I think it's wrong for you or any astrologer to tell people to live their lives by the way you tell them to live their well, lives. Well, how dare you be God and be judgmental? How dare you be I'm God? Not being I'm not being judgmental. I am helping people. You are playing God no, by I'm telling them how God. to live I their lives. I am not telling them. I am not telling them. You're, you're advising them, I aren't you? I am telling them what could come up and how to change it and how to channel the energy so that bad does not happen to them. Do you know But something? they don't have to. They don't have to. The planets do not tell you what to do. They influence you to think in a certain direction. I say astrology is a form of witchcraft. What do you think? You are entitled to that impen You are entitled to that opinion. What, but that it is not witchcraft. You are entitled. It is done mathematically, scientifically. It is not witchcraft. I am not a voodoo person. I don't do anything like that at all. Well, but Lynn, you have not been exposed to proper astrology, and so you're ignorant. Well, obviously, Lynn, yeah. you have not been exposed to the Bible. Yes, I have been exposed to the, the Bible. In the Bible, it's, it says My the dear, Bible is witchcraft yes. right in the Bible. Does right? not. The Bible. No, it does not. God would not want anyone to do something that was harmful to another, and what I do is not harmful to another but person. I, so sorry, it's not Lynn, against God. Lynn, in, in you the, are reading the Bible wrong. There are passages in oh, the Bible that tell it. Jesus was a prophet. You, I'm Jesus reading the Bible wrong. How can I be Jesus reading the Bible prophet. wrong when it says right in the Bible no, it, it compares astrology to witchcraft? No, How not. can you? Does not. Does it or doesn't it? Bring the Bible. They don't know any better. Does. They don't know. They're ignorant too. Oh, now she's calling <laughs> you ignorant. <laughs> okay, yeah. now. I, I have read passages also, in there that are... You're also are... doing astrological videos, is that correct? Yeah, sure. Why not? Well, what do you do on these videos? I do, I do predictions for the year. They're positive thinking ones. Well, you know what, Kevin Thomas, have you ever heard... Or MCA. Do you know... Might as well give it a oh, plug. It I'm a plug. here for that. I'm not here for any other reason. You know, so. uh, well, I'm sure of that, yeah. I'm an honest Sag, just like you are. Do you know who Kevin Thomas is? No. Well, I didn't think so. He, mm -hmm. he is a very distinguished author. Mm -hmm. And he wrote a book about astrology, mm -hmm. and he did a lot of research in it. Kevin Thomas is a well-respected journalist. I'm respected and he writes, in my field, too. And I quote Kevin Thomas, astrology is now rightfully disdained by all intelligent persons. What do you think about that? <laughs> Uh, why do I have uh, yes. why do I have multimillionaire clients and if they're not they shouldn't be intelligent then right multimillionaires? Well, there are a lot of stupid lot of millionaires, right? Yeah. Uh, they yes. couldn't have made a million dollars and more if they weren't. And uh, celebrities and famous people are they stupid? Dear, too? I think they would have got that million dollars without your astrological readings, I don't you think so? Yeah. 
Lynn. Oh, you don't know. Lynn, yes, these, little, these little prophecies that are in the newspaper every morning, mm -hmm. do you believe that these things are, are correct? You it should depends upon to... who writes them. I mean, they, they are so general, they could yes, mean anything. Because when you do those, you see, you have, you, there's so many planets in the sky that day that each different author could take a different thing, and you only have a chance to write one line on that, and one line is not much to say. So well, the, some right. people that write those are not astrologers. But when it says be careful, There well, are people a... who are not astrologers that write them. Let's go to the, uh, the audience. Yes, yes, sir. I'm Mark from Glendora Wally, and I'd just like to point out to your guests and everybody here that astrology had its origins in ancient Babylon, uh, greatly in part by Nimrod, who married his mother and was executed for sacrificing babies to Satan. And I'd just like to point out that anyone who involves himself in something like that, I don't want to have anything to do with. Oh, I, oh, I, 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 I don't know about what took place in Babylon. And, so and he can has a right to anything. If he doesn't want anything to do with astrology, that's his well, business. Well, obviously, he's been reading the Bible wrong, too, uh, right? Huh? I don't know anything uh, about yeah. it. <laughs> yes. Everyone reads the Bible wrong except our guests. Everybody has here. their own interpretation. Yes. Go ahead. Wally, I'm Kyle from Cerritos, and yes, I, like to, I like to say all this stuff is a bunch of garbage anyway. That's it's great. It's crazy, man. If Nobody you want believes to believe it, stuff. it's your opinion. Everybody yeah, it is my opinion. Everybody believe their opinion. Yeah, I right. I have my opinion. You have yours. That's what makes life interesting. It makes a lot more sense than yours and does, I'll tell you. Well, it does it. My life is wonderful. I have a wonderful life. I'm very happy I don't have to come here frustrated and yell at people and talk down to people. I like that. Let me, let me, let me say this. Good, I wanted you to do that. Let me say this. You got in your plug for your, for your MCA videos. That's right. But let me wind this up saying this from a very well-known researcher. And he says this. I Astrology is baloney. Humans are creatures of free will, and they should create no. their own destinies. And I'll be right back. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay. And welcome back. Now it's time for our final guest on the hot seat. <laughs> and let's see how long he's going to last. And I understand that this, yeah, he's back for a second appearance. Back for a second appearance. I think you were with us a year or so ago. Uh, his name is Michael Hardy, and he is a former, I hope, professional hitman. Oh. Uh. No, no applause. Well, Michael, you were a, a former professional hitman. And you, uh, you spent some time in prison. Isn't that correct, Michael? I spent some time in prison, Wally, certainly. Well, you should have, don't you think? Yeah! Well, Michael, I understand that the reason that you're... I understand, Michael, the reason that, that you're back with us again one year later is that you are now starting a movement that you believe no criminal, no matter what the crime may be, including murder, should be... should spend more than five years in jail. Do you believe that? No! Now, Michael, do you really believe... Do you really believe what I'm what I'm hearing? Well, we have to elaborate on the subject. Well, you just can't make a blanket statement. Well, you're saying, like, for example, murderers. Right. I understand you think that a, a murderer should not get the death penalty, should not get life in prison, but just five years, have him rehabilitated, and then set back on the streets. Do you believe that? I agree with segments of that. Yeah. Oh, come on. Okay, let me let me explain them to you, Wally. You know, before they changed the law in the state. What did murderers get? Five to life, right? Okay, and they stayed in a lot longer than seven years, right? But the thing that I'm trying to say, Michael... Wait a second, wait a second. That, that was the original, okay? Then they changed it and they got more liberal, right? That didn't work, so they changed it again. But what they're doing now still doesn't work, does it? Let me explain something to you. I think a person... I believe in indeterminate sentences. You understand? I believe in anybody who takes another person's life should get the death penalty, and that's it. Forget about it. I believe, let, let me tell you something. No, let me you tell you something. If you do something, no, no, you no, should hey, work your way show. out. Oh, you hold understand on. what I mean? No, no, I don't see what you mean. You're missing what I'm saying, man. You, you are trying to... Now, I want to tell you one thing. You I was nice last time I was here, right? Yeah. Right? I said, I said I liked you. I said I liked you. I felt that, I felt that your audience, you know, at least represented the pinnacle of intelligence. 
Nothing less than that. I said all these things, and I, I, never I even I, praised your guards. I never said I liked you, and Michael. David, I ain't got a damn bad word to say about him. Well, uh, me what? and David. <laughs> but, but, but Wally, Wally, what I'm Wally, saying is, don't Michael... jive me this time, man. Don't rile me. I'm trying to be cool. Oh. Anybody who is standing up for criminals and thinks they should get lesser sentences, I'm against them. I say we need to get tougher on criminals. Yeah. Tougher. Listen now listen, if, if that riles you, that's your trouble. What do you think? Yeah. Go ahead and answer that. I believe if a person commits a crime, okay, then they should get a sentence pertaining to the crime. But once they're in, something should happen. You understand me? Now, if they commit a murder, then they should get an indeterminate sentence, okay? Five to life. That means if they accomplish their goal of rehabilitation, in spite of the unrehabilitative factors involved in prison, if they accomplish this goal, then they can be released. You understand? If they don't, then they're sitting for life. I don't understand, and they don't understand, I understand and the people in not America don't understand, but I can't understand you not and you've got to try to understand that criminals and murderers must be punished, and I say give them... See, that's the... where you're wrong, man. You can't... Wait a second. Hold it. That's where I'm Let me right. explain to you. And... Hold on. <laughs> and murderers have got to go to the death penalty. You're wrong. I'm right. Good night, everybody. The opinions expressed.